Well, I've got my Dutch oven out, which can only mean one thing. It is officially soup season or almost soup season. It's still pretty hot here, but I did check the weather this morning and next week that weather is trending down. I think we're going to get some cooler weather and I am excited for some soups because as y'all know, I really only started enjoying soups a couple of years ago and now it's like one of my very favorite cozy little things to have in the fall and winter. So I'm excited to try some new ones and this first recipe is going to be so delicious. I'm popping in here to say a huge thank you to Mary Ruth for sponsoring today's video. I am so excited to tell you guys about these amazing supplements that I've been taking here in just a little bit. So this one's really easy. It's kind of like a cheese tortellini tomato soup. We're going to finish it off at the end with like some fresh parmesan which is just going to be like chef's kiss so good. This one does not take a lot of time. It doesn't have a ton of ingredients but it's going to have so much flavor. Okay so we are going to get our heat onto like a low medium. Now my bunky just had like the most genius idea. I don't know why I did not think of this but that's why I keep him around. <laughs> the recipe that we're going off of says to just go ahead and get a can of crushed tomatoes and then chicken broth and like bring it to a boil but to cook your Italian sausage on the side and then add it in later but he was like why don't we just go ahead and cook this in the Dutch oven and that way you'll kind of have a little bit of the remnants of it and give it even more flavor and it's only one pot so Gotta, gotta save those dishes, you That's know? That's right. So this... Simplify things. I love it. So we're gonna go ahead and get this cooking in our Dutch oven. Now we're using the Italian sausage, but if y'all have like ground beef or meatballs on hand or your family prefers that, use whatever y'all like. But I do think the Italian sausage is gonna give it a little bit more flavor mm -hmm. and be really good in there. So we pulled the Italian sausage out of here once it was cooked, but we left kind of like all of that good stuff behind. So then now to our Dutch oven, Bunky is going to add a, is it 28 ounce? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. Got a secret over here. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're gonna add our two cups of the uh, chicken broth back into this can so they're Smart. getting the rest of the goodies out of here. Smart. What, what is that little thing that people say? Like several minutes later. Several oh. minutes later. <laughs> Okay, so two cups of chicken broth, and then I'm going to just like raise our heat just a little bit because we want to kind of bring this to like a little simmer. So while this is heating up, I went ahead and added a little bit of Italian seasoning. I'm also going to do some salt and pepper, and then I'm going to do some fresh garlic because I think it'll be really good with the fresh garlic. But if you just have garlic powder, whatever you have, it's totally fine. I think you could even do minced garlic out of a little jar. <laughs> Okay, so we've got our like rolling simmer, but from looking at this and knowing we're gonna add in that pasta, I feel like it needs just a little bit more chicken broth. So I'm gonna add in probably about another cup. And then we're also gonna add in some heavy whipping cream and that's gonna make this like so rich and silky and just so, so good. So now that we have basically our like base of our soup done, we're just gonna add everything else back in, let it cook for like 10 or 15 minutes, and then it's gonna be done. That's what I love about this soup, it's like very simple and just like kinda quick. So we're gonna add in our cheese tortellini, a little bit of spinach, if you wanna leave this out you can, but if you wanna sink it in like for kiddos and stuff, you can add your spinach in. And then we'll add back in our Italian sausage, and literally, that is it, like very, very simple. So I'm just gonna do like a couple handfuls of spinach, and this is gonna kinda wilt down a little bit gonna disappear in yeah. there somewhat. We got the family size. Should we add it all in? Oh yeah. Why not? <laughs> add in your tea sortellini. You sure? Keep going? Oh, keep going, yeah. Okay. Oh, this is looking fantastic. And then last but not least, our sausage. So basically we just want our um, cheese sort of lady to get tender and you know, like cooked all the way through or heated up. So once that happens, this soup is ready to eat. So I just wanted to provide everybody with a little update. On our one of our recent videos, I said something about Italian seasoning and how there was, I think, fennel in it. Yeah. Apparently, it's not the fennel that does me wrong. <laughs> it's the, the marjoram, I believe. Yes. So, um, but Italian seasoning, I, li I like in small doses, but when there's just too much of it, there's something about it that, that, that gets to me. 
but I know that it's actually not fennel that I don't like because I know that fennel is an Italian sausage mm. and I like Italian sausage. That's true. So um, there's that. And then also, I don't know if you noticed this bunk, but I bought the can of the crushed tomatoes. It was the no salt added. I didn't notice that. And then also the um, chicken broth that we used was like unsalted, no salt. And I feel like that's a good thing a lot of times because then you can actually control how much salt you're putting in there. Yeah, that's um, true. So just a little, look at you. Look yeah. at that bunk in the kitchen. <laughs> I've learned a couple of things over the years. You have. You know? We'll taste this and see if it needs more salt, but I put enough in there that I think it's going to be perfect. Yeah, and then between that and like um, the Parmesan when on we top. add the Parmesan on top, like we're going to be just beautiful. We probably should add these earlier. Monkey and I were like, why don't we put some red pepper flakes in there? Because y'all know us. We want a little kick. But if you don't want to add these in, well, that's good. <laughs> don't feel like you have to. But I want to give it just like a teeny bit of spice. Yeah, like I, I don't want to know that it's in there. I just I just wanted to bring a little extra. Something, something. Something, something, yes. That is so good. Really? Mm-hmm. Is it too spicy from the, um... Mm-mm. Okay. Oh, my gosh. It's surprisingly not, um... It's luscious. Mm-hmm. Silky. Silky. Like, the the way it looked to me, it looked like it was going to be a little bit, like, thicker than, like, too much, you know? Yeah. It's actually still relatively thin. It is. But so <sighs> flavorful. The cheese swirlini obviously makes it. I mean, who doesn't love cheese tortellini, you know? <laughs> yeah. But the flavor of just the actual soup, like the base of it, mm. is delicious. And I love the spinach in there, too. Mm -hmm. And then I recommend going with the Italian sausage, because I feel like if you did do it with ground beef, it probably would be a little bit less... Flavorful? Yeah. This is fantastic. Mm. And the Parmesan on top it was a must, okay? Mm. This is easy, warm, cozy, not overly heavy at all. Mm -hmm. Just like such a great soup. Like you wanna keep this one in your back pocket for sure. For sure. Now let's talk about Mary Grace because I have just fallen in love with their products and I had seen so many like people online talk about it and just like rave about them. And then I have friends that use Mary Grace and funny enough, my package got delivered to our neighbor's house and she saw like Mary Grace on the box. And so she opened it because her family uses it as well. And then she brought it over. She's like, I'm so sorry I opened your mail, but she's like, we also use and love Mary Grace. So it was just so funny but once she told me that I was even more excited to try it so Bunky and I have actually both been using it for the past like I'll say month or so and we have just fallen in love with it so every single morning I take their liquid morning multivitamin and once you open this you just like keep it in the fridge which is nice because in the morning I'll grab this before I grab coffee and I take two tablespoons of this I know you're all gonna ask what it tastes like it actually has a raspberry flavor it tastes good I just throw it back and I don't mind taking things in pill form but I much prefer liquid form it's easy easier for me to swallow and it's easier to digest and that's kind of something that sets Mary Ruth's apart. It's like a lot of their things are in liquid form. Now the liquid morning multivitamin, this is like your powerhouse. So it's gonna have your minerals, amino acids, vitamin C, D, E, B vitamins in there. And so this is gonna help support like your energy. If you're like me and you get a midday slump, this will help kind of combat that. And then um, hair, skin, and nails. But anything that I know I can use that's gonna like support the health of my hair and scalp and growth and all of that, I am all for. So then after that, I make a cup of water. Actually, I make two cups because Bunky does it too. And we use their zinc drops and their elderberry drops. Now, these zinc drops have no flavor. The elderberry has very little, but I just mix a couple of drops of each of these into my glass of water so I can have like my zinc and my elderberry at the same time. And I'm sure a lot of you guys know elderberry and zinc are great for like immune support, helping to kind of like fight off colds and things. And since we're going into that season, I wanna make sure that we are like, 
you know, armor on <laughs> with as many vitamins and things that we can take to try and not get sick um, this fall and winter. So it is just like awesome that I can take this, no flavor, drink it with my water, which is also good to have water before coffee. So it's just like a part of our morning routine before we have coffee. And I'll actually make my cup of water and then I just like sit there and wordle. If y'all wordle, let me know down below. Bunky and I do it every morning, but I'll just drink my water, do my wordle. I'm getting in my vitamins. It is just like the perfect start to my day. So Mary Ruth was founded in 2014 by Mary Ruth herself. She's a certified health educator, nutrition consultant, culinary chef, and a mom of four children under five, including twins. She was inspired to help people live healthier lives after both her father and her brother passed away from heart conditions. She is an inspiration. We love Mary Ruth. I know that you guys will too. So click the link in my description and use my code MRO Jessica O to get 20% off of all Mary Ruth's products and the code works on Mary Ruth's website and on Amazon. On Amazon, just make sure you're buying products sold by Mary Ruth Organics and not a third party. Now for dinner tonight, we are going to make a Cajun chicken pasta soup, which sounds amazing. And I'm laughing because we actually don't have Cajun seasoning. I told Bunky, listen, we have 55,000 <laughs> different spices in this cabinet. I'm like, we're just, we're just gonna make up our own Cajun seasoning. So I've pulled out some ingredients. I'm gonna show you guys how we're gonna make it. And I'm gonna go ahead and actually cook our chicken breast first. That way we can just use one pot again. You gave me the idea yesterday with like the Italian sausage. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm gonna do it again with our chicken. So we'll cook that first, remove it and then kind of like build our soup and add it back in but let me show you this cajun seasoning so here is our lineup we have our garlic powder we're going to add some cumin in there some onion powder chili powder some smoked paprika the recipes that we looked up also called for um cayenne which somehow we're out of i have no idea how we don't have any in our pantry but we don't so i'm gonna add in a little bit of this kinder's red garlic which is like packs a punch so much flavor i was honestly just gonna use this as our cajun seasoning but i was like well it'll be fun to kind of build our own and then just add this in there to give it a little extra something you gotta get the uh black pepper over there too oh and black pepper yes so i'm gonna go ahead and like build our little spice rub and then we'll get our chicken in the dutch oven now y'all know i'm just gonna like make this but if you want to follow the recipe i'm sure there are lots of them on pinterest <laughs> But I'm just went off what, you know, my heart feels. So to my Dutch oven, I'm gonna add in just a little bit of oil. And then I'm just cutting my chicken into like bite-sized pieces. That way it cooks, you know, faster and more evenly. And there's probably a much easier way to do this, but I end up just holding a piece of chicken with a fork and taking my chicken my chicken. Taking my kitchen scissors to my chicken. So now we've got all of our chicken cut up in there. I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle in some of our Cajun seasoning. Get this nice and seasoned and then kind of stir that around. Okay, chicken is cooked and it looks amazing. It smells so good. I wanna try a piece of this chicken once we get it out, just to like check our um, Cajun seasoning flavor here. <laughs> yeah, who don't love some Cajun chicken? Yes. I might have to just make this little seasoning concoction and do us some grilled chicken sometime, cause that looks good. It's on the black stone. Yeah. Oh, yes. See, and now we have all that good flavor in there. We gotta remove it from the heat. Yeah, so it doesn't burn. So to our pot, I'm gonna add a little bit of oil and a little bit of butter. And then to that, I'm gonna add in some diced onion. Now, of course, y'all know I tried to leave it in bigger chunks and only doing like a quarter of an onion, but if you wanna do like half or a whole onion, feel free. We're gonna sweat this out a little bit and then we'll add in our garlic. Have you a piece. I got a little piece too. Cheese. Mmm. <laughs> mm. You know what I think it needs? Or what I should put in there? What? Just a little pinch of salt. Cause you need the salt to balance out the like. Yeah, but. Besides that though. It's really coming through the right way though. It's delicious, it tastes Cajun-y. I put the tiniest little bit of chicken broth in there to like deglaze the bottom. Oh wow. Does it not look amazing? That worked. I know. Okay, add in garlic in here. I just didn't want to add it at first cause I didn't want it to burn. 
Now to this, we're gonna add in a little bit more Cajun seasoning. And I'm gonna do a little pinch of salt. So now that our onions and garlic have kind of like sweat down, we removed it from the heat and then I'm gonna add in one can of diced tomatoes. And then we're gonna add in our chicken broth. You wanna do about four to five cups, so I'm gonna add in this entire container. We might even need a little bit more. That one wasn't quite full, so I'm gonna add about half of this one as well. And then we're gonna do about one cup of heavy whipping cream. You have this cup? Mm-hmm. Okay, let me give this a stir. Okay, we're gonna put this back on the heat and bring it to like a little simmer. So we've got this like beautiful rolling bowl in there and then you can use whatever pasta you want to. I'm just doing like the mini uh, bow tie pasta. I'm going to add this in. That's probably, whoop, lost one. We'll stir those around and then we're just gonna let those cook until they're like al dente. We'll add our chicken back in, add some fresh Parmesan and then this will be ready to eat. That was a quick one too though, really just like, Besides cooking the chicken, you know, 30 minutes tops. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whew. It's a nice, like, just, for some reason, I'm having a very difficult time describing Cajun flavor, but it's just so good. Well, Cajun's supposed to be like a little savory, a little spicy. Yeah. You know, like a little bit blackened, if that makes sense. It, it's just got, it, it's just packed with flavor. Now, you know what I was a little bit confused about as I when you told me that this is what we were having for dinner. For some reason in my mind, I, I didn't really comprehend that it was like, cause you know how you have like Cajun chicken pasta. Yeah. But this is in soup form. Right. So I wasn't putting two and two together. <laughs> I actually like this a lot because sometimes I feel like Cajun chicken pasta can be real heavy. Yeah. And this is not like that at all. Well, I think too, like how much you love like warm tomatoes. I do so love having one. that like tomato and onion in there. I feel like it's just right up your alley. Mm. Now, what I love about this soup is that it has a little bit of like spice in there, but it's not like a heat where it's like so spicy that like you know you're sweating through it. It is like the most perfect balance of like flavors in your mouth. Does that make sense? Yeah, I was trying to think of a way to describe it. It's almost like the heat is kind of like at the back of your throat. It's not very really... mellow though. Yeah. So good, y'all have to try this one. And since it is getting to be that time of year and we're all like gonna be making these warm cozy soups, I thought I would share a couple more of our favorite recipes with you. Okay, so to make this soup, if you wanna do it really easy, just get a rotisserie chicken and pull that chicken off and use that. This is like a 30 minute soup, so it's not gonna take any time at all. We actually had a lot of chicken on hand, so I went ahead and cooked it a little bit earlier today and that is what we're gonna use in ours. But if you wanna make it super easy, get the rotisserie chicken. Another tip, if you want to make this a lot faster, just get a package of bacon bits and add those in. But since we have this bacon that we need to cook, we're going to go ahead and cook this up first. This just like shows, you know. The OCD. <laughs> Baby cutting baby carrots. <laughs> you know, if I had a big carrot, this would probably work a lot better. But yeah. use what you have, you know. I actually looked for big carrots and I couldn't find any at Sam's Club. They don't sell big carrots. I only sell baby carrots. Guess who's having a little bit of carrot right now? Daisy May. Mm -hmm. Oh, nope, she passed on it. She's like her mom, she doesn't like vegetables. Come on now. <laughs> Funky. Yes. Did you know? What? Oh my goodness! Did you just see that? I just saw it. 
Monkey, how cute! Bunny love. Bunny love like a monkey love. So close. Y'all, this is the way to do some bacon because it looks so good. There's no mess. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Have you, this is some delicious looking bacon. It really is. This is the way to go. And you know what I'm real excited about too? What? Uh, Deglazing the pan, Ooh. getting all of that uh, bacony goodness out of there. Yes. Or in, in, in it getting into our soup. Yes. Mm. It's gonna be dank. I went ahead and cut up all of our chicken, and honestly, I did not even marinate this. Um, whenever I was cooking it, I just put a little bit of like roasted garlic dressing and some blend on there, and it's so good, still, and has lots of flavor. And Bunky's just mixing up our Better Than Bouillon because this recipe calls for six cups of chicken broth, but we're just gonna use the bouillon instead. Okay, so now it's go time. So basically we just gotta put everything in this Dutch oven. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we dumped out like all of that bacon grease but left all the bits in there. All right. That's it? That's. I think we need to explain. So Bunky made a super concentrated batch of the bouillon. Yeah. And so it just needed more water. I made the equivalent of six cups in just two cups and then I added four more cups of just regular water. So we have six cups of bouillon. chicken broth. Okay and then to this we're gonna add our celery and carrots and then chicken. I'm trying to reduce the splash. Thank you. And next we're gonna add one can of this cheddar cheese condensed soup. Talk about cheesy goodness. That's cheesy goodness. Wow, just I could just dip a nacho chip in that. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get it all. Make sure you get all of it. Don't leave anything behind. Yep, look at that. You see that? And then this could not have worked out any more perfect. It calls for one packet of the Hidden Valley Ranch seasoning, which is about a lid full. And literally that is exactly what was left in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump this in. And then next goes one cup of milk. Everybody's coming together now. Everybody's becoming friends. Okay, so last thing was the bacon, and we're just gonna give this a big stir, and then bring it to a boil, and then turn it down um, to like a lower temperature, and let it simmer for about 20 to 25 minutes. Then we're gonna pop in some of these egg noodles and some cheddar cheese, let these get soft, and let that cheese melt, and then our soup will be done. And these will only take about five minutes, so literally this is like a 30 minute soup. Okay, so it has been 20 minutes. This is simmering away, so I'm gonna go ahead and add in our egg noodles. And then somehow I realized I did not have any cheddar cheese, which is very odd because y'all know I keep a lot of cheese in this house. Um, so I'm gonna add in two slices of this Velveeta because y'all know if you watched our last What's For Dinner, it's liquid gold and makes everything creamy. So I'm gonna add those in. And then we have some of this Fiesta blend, so I'm just gonna add this in as well. Okay, so I'm popping this lid back on for about five minutes just to let those noodles cook and that cheese melt, and then this soup will be ready to eat. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, this is picture perfect. It smells amazing. So we'll go ahead and give it a try and then tell you guys what we think. But I cannot tell you how warm. It literally makes my heart to have a cozy soup tonight. Did your heart grow three sizes? It grew three sizes, B. Mm. This might be like the best soup you've ever had. Yeah, it's hot. <laughs> that is good. That is so good. Wow. I want to taste just the liquid part. Oh, the liquid is like where it's at. I want to like sop that up with some bread. That's what I was going to say. Okay, first of all, I feel like I never even really started eating soups until probably last year. Y'all know I used to be a very picky eater, but I've come a really long way. And the only soup I ever eat is like loaded potato soup. That's my absolute favorite. You, you eat a broccoli cheddar oh, soup. Oh, broccoli cheddar soup too. But I've never had chicken noodle soup. I know that it's going to be very hard to believe, but I never have. So this to me is incredible. Like just so flavorful, so warm and like rich but in the best way mm -hmm. just makes you feel good and cozy and it's delicious y'all will have to try this recipe okay now it is time to get started on this soup bunky is very excited because he said he's so hungry he's been waiting all day for this pretty much mm -hmm. i perturbed <laughs> here's kind of an overview of everything bunky has our water boiling because we are going to make lasagna noodles we're going to break them up into like smaller pieces cook them about one minute less than what the box says and then set them aside and we'll get started on the rest of the soup and we are going to use ground beef you're going to use a breakfast sausage so i just have the jimmy dean's regular sausage that's going to give it so much yummy flavor and y'all there is onions in here but what i'm going to do is start out by sauteing the onions take them out set them aside for bunky and then i'll add everything else in see see that's how you're going to do it that's how i'm going to do it mm -hmm. but aren't you guys proud of me for even putting them in the same pot as everything else okay so I'm we'll saute you. that saute the garlic there's thyme basil parmesan um, crushed tomatoes tomato paste and then at the end we're gonna make little like ricotta balls I guess or we do like ricotta parmesan and basil and then drop those in oh my goodness it's gonna be so good but first things first we gotta get these in the pot so they can start cooking start burling burling <laughs> now I got a question for sure. you funky while we're while we're this is going can we go ahead and start cooking the other stuff too sure Perfect, because I'm hungry. I know. Well, he's over here hangry at me today. You said this was going to be ready like three hours ago. I got really busy, Bunky. <laughs> Are we going for a rough chop here, Bonk, or a mince? I'm going for like a mixture of both. <laughs> We're going for whatever this turns out like. Are we going for a dice or a slice? Like, I feel like you just like would like, uh, maybe we should dice it. A little smaller? Well, let me look at it again. Like, wouldn't you just let it have like a little string of onion? Yeah, I would actually. So let's do it like that. Is that fine? Yeah. Is that enough? I think so. y'all our house is a mess because we just got back from camping yesterday and like we threw everything in the floor so 10 to 12 minutes so we're gonna do 10 minutes okay we'll just use the old timer here let me turn this back burner on and you pop those back there right right okay so with these onions and garlic it says to um cook them with a little bit of oregano and thyme. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for both. Like I'll add some thyme to the onions and then I'll add some thyme and oregano to the garlic as well. We're gonna start with the onions. Yeah, and see at least the, um, at least the flavor of the oil is still gonna have that onion flavor in it. Like I'm trying, you know, baby steps. Yeah. Okay, I can't do this. I'm clearly, I uh, think you're supposed to like. Just to hold the stem and then just be able to pull, but. I'm pulling and I'm pulling it apart. I think I'm pulling too hard. No. That smell good. Gosh, it smells so good. Like, there is nothing better than like the smell of like thyme and basil, rosemary. 
So I think I already said this, but just to say it again, as long as you're not a crazy person like me and you really like onions, leave those in there and saute them with the garlic. If you don't like onions and you are like me, first of all, I'm so glad to know that I'm not alone. And second of all, you can just take them out and then pop them into whoever soup that wants the onions. Okay, so to the sauteed garlic, the thyme, and the oregano, we're gonna go ahead and add in both the ground beef as well as the breakfast sausage. Okay, so our meat is pretty much brown. We're gonna go ahead and drain about half of this grease. So I kind of have it pushed over to the side here. So Bunky's gonna get half that grease out. And then once we do that, we'll add in like our tomato paste, tomatoes, chicken stock, all the rest of our ingredients, and then it'll simmer for about 20 minutes. Oh, and we did add salt and pepper to this too, by the way, I just forgot to show you guys. Okay, so we got most of that grease out, and I'm just gonna add about three tablespoons of tomato paste. Stir this in and then let it cook for about a minute, and then we're gonna deglaze the bottom of it with some wine. It calls for white wine. I forgot to get some. We only have red wine, so we're using the red wine. You use whatever you have. We'll let you know. <laughs> I think it's going to be just fine. Yeah, given that we're cooking with red stuff, I think red wine will be fine. I agree. Okay, so this is to add the wine to declaze, but you can see there's not really anything stuck to the bottom of our pan, but I am going to go ahead and add just a little bit. So I'm just going to pour in a splash of this red wine. I think if anything, that's just going to give like a deeper, richer flavor. Just drop a little bit more Okay, in. I'll drop a little more. I'm trying to save the rest for yourself. I mean, I might want to... Have a glass of dinner. <laughs> okay, so the recipe called for one can of whole tomatoes and to dump it in with their juice. I just got a big can of crushed tomatoes, so that's what I'm going to use because I think it'll be just fine. And then to this, we're now going to add in four cups of chicken broth, so it's just one container of it. Okay, and next we're gonna add in our parsley and then we're gonna bring this to a boil and then reduce the heat to low and let it simmer for about 20 minutes and then add salt and pepper if you need and then we will pour in our cream, our noodles, all of the goodness, the ricotta, and this will be done. It's actually very simple. Okay, we're gonna turn it up, let it start simmering and then we'll cut it back down to low. And cover. It actually doesn't say to cover. It just says let it simmer on low for 20 minutes. Let it simmer. Okay, so now that this has been simmering for about 20 minutes, we're going to go ahead and add in about half a cup of heavy cream. And then we're going to add in those cooked lasagna noodles and let this keep cooking for about 5 to 10 more minutes and then it'll be ready. Go ahead and pour this in. Uh-huh. So now I can put the onions in? No. <laughs> You can put your onions into your own bowl. This looks heavenly. Pretty interesting. So while that finishes, I'm gonna go ahead and make our little ricotta mixture. And this, you're just gonna kind of form into little balls and drop it on top of your soup. And it'll kind of melt in and give you that like creamy cheesiness. So I'm gonna add ricotta to my bowl. And then it calls for basil. The only basil we had is kind of old, so I'm not gonna add ours in there, but it also calls for parsley, so I'll go ahead and add that in. Just gonna kinda pull it apart with my fingers. We'll do some salt and pepper. And then Parmesan cheese. And then you'll just kinda form it into little balls like that, and we'll just drop this right on top of the soup. And that, my friends, is lasagna soup, and it looks incredible. Okay, I wanna try a little bite of it with this ricotta, because I think that's gonna just make it over the top. Oh, you gotta add your onions to yours. Meanwhile. What? You're the one that's been hangry, and I'm the one eating. My belt's watering. It's gonna be hot, in it? It is. I already burned my mouth. 
What does it taste like? Lasagna in but soup better. form? <laughs> but better. You know what it is? What is it? The sausage. The sausage. It gives it so much flavor. Oh my gosh. This is so delicious. And honestly, it took a little while, but it's just all thrown in a pot, so it's very simple to make. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Monkey, this is like better than like all for and Panera soup, okay? I'm just saying. I'm gonna tell you, I felt <laughs> extremely Italian whenever I was cooking this whole meal, by the way. It's amazing. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna let you take a bite. Okay. But I can't stop. Okay, Monkey. I like that very much. It is amazing. Yeah, it is. You guys have to try this. It is absolutely so good, so warm and cozy and hearty and just like a great alternative to like having to make spaghetti, I mean make lasagna. It's a lot less trouble. You don't have to do all that layering and whatnot. It's so delicious. So there you have it, all kinds of yummy soups. I hope this gave you some inspiration. You guys will try some of these. Let me know what you think. I'll have them typed out or linked down below. I love you so much. Thank you for hanging out with us. Don't forget to check out Mary Ruth's down below as well. Give this one a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Bye y'all.